The limitations we experience, they're brought on by self. Self-inflicted wounds that we do to ourselves off the preconceived notions that we have built up in our mind. And those were the things that I was doing. I didn't give people the help, the chance to help me. So when it came time to compete in a pro day and working out for NFL scouts and actually hoping and believing in that NFL dream, I had a relapse the week after that took my career completely away. And I made up my mind while I was in that hospital bed before doctors came and stripped me of my football career. I said, Tyler, you've been running all this time away from your problem. I wonder what will happen, Tyler, if you decide to turn around and run towards your problem and meet it head on like you've done all your life playing football. And so when I turned and I started asking for help and started defeating the stigma that so many of us have with multiple sclerosis coupled with a man's pride, when I started to let those things go, I reached out to Mary B, the lead of Pro Player Foundation. And what ended up happening, what ended up happening was that Mary B had a friend by the name of Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie looked up all the neurologists that are best in the world and she found that Dr. Edward Fox had an office in Round Rock, Texas. So I made my way to Round Rock, Texas where I got the support that I needed after you put me on the waiting list, Doc. Just like everybody else. He didn't treat me no different than some of y'all in the audience, all right? I was on the waiting list. It took a little while. But as I kept on running towards the disease, my father would pick me up and take me to physical therapy. I was learning how to walk again. My father was learning how to walk again. So father and son relationship got rekindled in a way that you could have never imagined because I understood what it was like for my father to have to depend on other people for help. So as I kept on running towards multiple sclerosis, a woman by the name of Shana Watson ended up moving from California to Dallas, Texas. And I married that woman in 2011. Now my wife who's here, she always asked me from time to time, I'm all about real life and real talk. My wife asked me all the time, she said, baby, did you marry me? Because you knew I wouldn't run from my MS. Baby, look at me and look at me good. I married you because of what you have come from. Growing up in San Francisco and also growing up in East Oakland. Becoming the first person in your family to graduate with a degree from college. And then you set the bar higher for us as a family by getting your master's degree in social work. Baby, I married you because I know that when I look in your eyes, you won't let me feel sorry for myself. You will push me to be the man that I am destined and called to be. And the things that are coming into my life right now with this whole speaking thing, you're pushing me to answer that call. You won't let me become complacent. Those are just a few of the reasons, honey, why I married you. So I'm still running towards multiple sclerosis. And what ends up happening as I'm continuing to run towards MS, I get to speak in front of 500 people at the National MS Society Convention in Dallas-Fort Worth, which catapulted me on a whole different platform and which was allowing me to speak in the schools that I speak in, the businesses that I speak in, the churches that I speak in, delivering messages of inspiration and empowerment. You never know what happens when you continue to run towards that disease. And oh yes, when doctors told us that it would be difficult for us to have children because of complications that I had with MS and then my wife with her own complications, we have two children upstairs getting babysitted right now. So you got to take a chance, my MS patients. You have got to take a shot. You have got to open up and release the fear and tell somebody, anybody. You don't have to do it like I do in front of the masses. Tell one person because that one person has outlets for you and can outstretch their arms to help you in a way that you could have never imagined before. But you've got to tell somebody. You have to take the shot. In life, we will miss 100% of the shots that we never take.
Have you ever thought about it? The chances that you never take, you always wishing and wondering, but you will miss 100% of the shots that you never take. You got to tell somebody. MS to me is like Mike Tyson in his heyday. Growing up, I remember watching Iron Mike and my man was undefeated. My pop was so mad one time he ordered pay-per-view and my man knocked somebody out in like 30 seconds. <laughs> pay-per-view back in the day when you had to actually call to order it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but then one day there was a man by the name of Buster Douglas who stepped into the ring with Iron Mike. And nobody gave him a chance. Nobody gave him a chance, and I have to imagine that the people in his camp that he told about, that he really needed to support when he was going into battle with Iron Mike, they believed in him. And what happened was that he defeated Iron Mike Tyson and became heavyweight champion of the world. So when you look at multiple sclerosis, ladies and gentlemen, multiple sclerosis is like Iron Mike in the ring. And he's standing there, and he's big, and he's strong, and he's undefeated. But what Iron Mike or multiple sclerosis in the ring doesn't understand is that there are a new patient of multiple sclerosis people who are joining together with their families and we are prepared to enter that ring and we're going to go to war. And sooner or later after that left hook, that right hook and that uppercut, MS is going to say, I don't want no more of this. And it starts with this event tonight. I'm coming to a close and I'm going to leave you with this because I'm a big believer in knowledge and wisdom and you can only pertain that by the books that you read. And I came across a novel by a man who's an amazing sports psychologist by the name of Jim Aframo. And he came out with a book many years ago called The Champion's Mindset. And all my life, up until I made that decision in the hospital bed, I had fear in my mind whenever you brought up multiple sclerosis. And Jim once said in that book, I forget what page it is, but he said, fear. There's no more running from it. Because when you see the word fear, or when you are overcome with that feeling, Fear should now stand for face everything and respond. With multiple sclerosis, ladies and gentlemen, we're not running no more. We're going to stand tall like a statue and we're going to face everything together and we will respond to this disease. We will respond.